Soy de Argentina y conocimos la comunidad Amadía gracias al imán eh, Marwan Gil hace un año. Eh, y quería preguntarle, eh, ¿qué mensaje le puede dar a los ciudadanos comunes eh, para que puedan llegar a ser buenas personas? Eh, ser amables, ser honestos y que su corazón eh, no recaiga en el odio, en la venganza y qué, qué nos puede comentar eh, hacia la gente, los ciudadanos argentinos. And she's asking uh, what message uh, could Hazur give to the Argentinian citizens in order for them to become uh, better people with uh, high moral values and love in their hearts instead of having hatred and, uh, and uh, hate, hatred feelings. You see, Argentina, the Argentinian people are also at least somehow uh, religious minded or religious conscious people. They believe. In Christianity and they believe in God so you should fear God always remember you see the basic thing is if you believe in God then you must believe in this that God is always the one and omnipotent God is always watching over you and he is seeing all your actions and deeds So the basic thing is, if you fear God, then you will discharge your duties according to the teaching of the religion and God Almighty. So if that is done, then you can live uh, peacefully and harmoniously. And because this is the teaching of Allah, or all of all the religions, even Bible says, be peace and calm and kind to your neighbors and your fellow beings. This is the teaching of Islam. So if you have a fear of Allah and you obey the holy books and the religious teachings, then there will be peace and harmony in the world. This is what Ahmadiyya community has been doing everywhere across the world. Sí, dice que el, en, en, en Argentina en concreto el, el, la gente es en su mayoría religiosa, son de hecho cristianos y es por eso que lo importante es eh, temer a Dios, 
creer en Dios y temer a Dios. Porque una persona que sea temerosa de Dios, eh, automáticamente sus mo valores morales van a, van a incrementar. Eh, y esto es común en todas las religiones, eh, no solo en el Islam, sino también en, en el libro sagrado del, del cristianismo. En la Biblia también eh, se habla de esto. Entonces, por eso es importante eh, que la gente reconozca a su Creador y tema a Dios. Y, y esto es un esfuerzo que, en concreto, la comunidad Ahmadiyya está haciendo en todo el mundo. Y también eh, deben ser eh, leales a la, a la ley, eh, a la ley de la tierra y, y respetar, eh, el respeto mutuo es importante también. Es Gray Ramírez, soy de Guatemala y yo quisiera saber qué lo motivó a usted a autorizar la construcción de un hospital en Guatemala que va a beneficiar a muchas mujeres y a muchos niños. No es un hospital cualquiera, es el primer hospital de la comunidad de Latinoamérica y también pues hay muchos proyectos de educación. ¿Por qué Guatemala? ¿Por qué poner la mirada en nuestro país? ¿Y cuáles son los proyectos para Guatemala? Gracias. She's saying she's from Guatemala uh, and she would like to know uh, what, has, uh, what is the reason uh, because of which we're building the first hospital in Guatemala, which is going to help a lot of children and women, and also the reason what for the reason of building a hospital there in Guatemala. Why we have chosen Guatemala? Eh? Why we have chosen Guatemala for this project, as well as the education? Why we have project? chosen Guatemala for this project? You see, one of our MD member, David Gonzalo Sahib, is Guatem from Guatemala. He was very much anxious to open a hospital there. And uh, our community members there also wanted to open a hospital there. So the first demand came from them. This is we have started our first project, hospital project there. If you demand from any other place, uh, if demand comes from any other place, we shall start our new projects there as well. Sí. Dice que en el caso de Guatemala eh, fue a través del señor David González eh, que vive allí. Eh, quien pidió que se iniciara el proyecto de construcción de, de este hospital y esa es la razón por la que eh, se, ha, se ha construido allí. Pero de igual forma, si, si surgen peticiones de otros países, entonces eh, Dios mediante también se iniciarán proyectos allí. You should be happy that we have started our project of giving, extending medical help to your country people. Why you are worried? <laughs> Pregunta que eh, debería, debería estar contenta ¿no? de, de que se inicie este proyecto. Entonces, eh, si estás preocupada, ¿por qué, por qué esa preocupación? No, está, al contrario, estamos muy felices, pero queremos saber por qué, por qué escogernos a nosotros, por qué el privilegio de escogernos a nosotros, porque además hay muchos proyectos educativos que han ayudado a niños también eh, a acceder a la educación, que es algo que a veces el propio Estado olvida. Yes, she's saying that she, she feels privileged uh, for this project and uh, she wanted to know uh, why uh, the honor of, of uh, starting this project in Guatemala as well as education projects when even sometimes uh, the government is not uh, providing that much help. So, uh, because although we love all of the humanity, but we love Guatemalans. <laughs> <laughs> a pesar de que el amor eh, que tenemos es por toda la humanidad, pero también eh, con Guatemala. Gracias. Sí. Sí. Aisha Khan, USA. Assalamu alaikum, I'm uh, Aisha Khan, a reporter with Religion News Service in America. Um, I'm interested in the recent increase in outreach from the Ahmadi community to Latin American and uh, countries and the Spanish-speaking world as a whole. Um, can you discuss why the Jamaat has chosen now, this particular time, to do this level of outreach um, and Who? to Latin American countries and uh, also Spanish-speaking Spanish -speaking speaking countries? Yes. Yeah, to extend our projects there and to right. open more missions there more and, missions there, and start missions. our missionary work there. Huh? Yes. You see, it had to be done a long time ago. But for each thing, there is some specific time to start the project. This time, one is that Allah Ta'ala, I should say, put in my heart that I, we should start our missionary work in Spanish countries, including Spain and other Latin American countries and other countries. 
apart from that, one of the very much uh, ambitious and staunch Amadi, as I mentioned, David Sir, he came to me once and said that in uh, our countries in Latin America and that area of the world, almost 400 million people are Spanish speaking and they are being deprived of the true teaching of Islam. Why don't you start or launch some preaching programs there? So that was one of the reasons. So apart from there, 40 million people of Spain and 400 million people of that area should know the true teaching of Islam. And uh, so because nowadays much is being said about uh, Islam, and that is not in a, you know, in a good way. The name of Islam is being being defamed everywhere in the world. So this is the right time where we extend the true message of Islam, especially every in all parts of the world, and especially in those parts where they were completely ignorant of the true teaching of Islam. Right? Lucian from Serbia. Yes, my name is Lucian Landa. I work for the Sierra Broadcasting Corporation. When I came in contact with the Amagi people in Sierra Leone, I had a mixed feeling. They said there is an MOU between my station and the Amadia people, so they bring their programs to be aired on television. I happen to be the head of TV, so I have to schedule their programs. I was attacked by Muslims again, that I'm giving more preference to the Amadia people than. I said, but I don't understand. This is Muslim. And then they said, no, it's not the same. So I started researching to know what's the difference between the Muslims and the Ahmadiyya. Because I kept arguing with a particular lady that these people are Muslims as well. You are Muslim. So why are you attacking me? I am a Christian. I don't know. Mm -hmm. But she kept on attacking. And then I kept on defending the Ahmadiyya people. And I wanted to know more. So I started asking questions. But then I'm guarding something. So when I came here, I have been privy to know some of what the Ahmadiyya people believe. But what I want you to make clear for me is that I want to know the difference between the, the a prophet and a Madi. That's what prophet and Ahmadi. Yes. No, a, a difference between a prophet and a Madi. A Madi. Madi. Yes. Uh -huh. You see, it was foretold by the Holy Prophet of Islam that in the latter days a man will appear when the true teaching of Islam will be distorted and Muslim will be Muslim by name but not be practicing Muslim and that is what you have seen and you have had personal experience that they were attacking you that why you are doing this that so Muslim should not behave like this Islam means peace love and harmony so instead of attacking you they should have shown some peace, harmonious and peaceful sentiments extend some peace uh, and love for towards you. You see, and the, as I have said, the Holy Prophet of Islam foretold that in the later days when the true teaching of Islam will be distorted, although Quran, the holy book of Muslims, will remain be intact in its original form, and it is still, because it's the, it's the, it's the claim of the Quran. But Muslim will not be practicing Muslim. So at that time, he prophesied that Messiah and Mahdi will come. And Messiah and Mahdi are the same, uh, is, is the same um, person. Two different titles, but the same person. Right? So we believe, but other Muslim believe, say, because he said the Messiah will come and Mahdi will come, and the, they are thinking that Jesus is did not die on the cross and was ascended as Christians believe to the heaven and he will come in the 14th century or in the, sometime later. So we say that no, we believe that Jesus Christ was the true prophet of God and as other prophets passed away, that is what Quran tells us, he also passed away after living a long life in this world and uh, the person who will come will come on the footsteps of Jesus Christ from among Muslim Ummah 
and Mahdi will also come. So Jesus, the title of Jesus will be to preach to Christians and other religions about the, the, the true teachings of Islam. And the Mahdi will be the true guide of for the Muslims, a guiding light for the Muslims. So both of them will work together. I mean this, both titles will work together and the same person will be with the same title, with the with those both two titles, and he will spread the true message of Islam to other religions, to other nations, and to Muslim Ummah as well. So Mahdi is for Muslims, to guide Muslims, to tell the true teaching of Islam, and Messiah is for Christians because you know, in the in the world you can see the the Muslim the, the Christians are quite dominant. As far as the number of Christian, the, the number is concerned, although quite a number of Christians in this, this uh, developed world, they are not practicing Muslim uh, Christians. Even they have left religion, apart from Africa and some other parts where Christianity still prevails. So, Messiah and Mahdi, according to our belief is the same person who was to give the true teaching of Islam, who was to spread the true teaching of Islam among Muslims and other religions, right? And uh, being a Messiah, his title will be of prophet, but subordinate prophet, who will work under the umbrella of the prophet of Islam, Sallallahu he will spread the same teaching and same traditions which were spread and uh, um, um, uh, revealed to the Holy Prophet of Islam, Sallallahu Alaihi Right? How do you see the Ahmadiyya group really expanding in Central America um, in order to assist these countries that are in such desperate need of different things? You see, our work is a missionary work and we believe and this is the teaching of the Quran that there is no compulsion on religion. Religion is a matter of your heart. So only message we are spreading is the true Islamic, true message of Islam, right? And we let the people decide whether they accept it or not. So. So our work is a missionary work, we shall keep on doing it, whether people accept it or not, at least they will know the true teaching of Islam. Eh? So what the, the misconceptions they have in their minds about Islam will be removed by this. So we hope if we are giving you something good, you will accept it. And if we are not, then it, it, it might take time because it's not easy to change the religion, right? It will take time. And this is how the missionary com communities uh, uh, work and the problems they face. So whether we are expanding our community there or not, but we shall keep on doing our missionary work. Okay? Thank you. from USA. Mm -hmm. Assalamu alaikum. Um, my name is Raj Kalyango. I'm a journalist. Now, I just need to be guided the relationship between Islam and organizations like uh, United Nations, just for example. Because UN advocates for like uh, education for all, equality, for gender equality, and somewhere, somewhere, people say Islam uh, discriminates gender like women. So. Uh, what is the relationship between Islam and such organization that advocates things which looks at the face of it that against the what they think it is normal? I don't know whether I, I understood. You see, normally. as far as uh, <laughs> Islam does not, first, the first thing is that Islam does not discriminate between genders. Right? Islam says that respect women and give due right to the women. But Islam has the concept of doing of labor. Women have this job and men have this job. 
Islam does not deprive women from getting education. So you could see day before yesterday, quite a number of girls took uh, um, uh, medals and uh, certificates from me for um, having a higher education, right? So one thing is this. And how can we both work together amicably? If it is a true Islam, that we believe that we have this practice and spread, then we can work with any organization which is, uh, you know, is not a religious organization. And Islam is a religion. And Islam says that you give due rights to all of the human kind, whether Muslims or non-Muslims, right? So for these purposes, where religious is, religion is not involved, we can uh, just um, uh, work together and uh, extend our help. Even you know, during the time of Holy Prophet Sallallahu before his uh, claim of being the Prophet, he joined a, uh, a committee which was uh, formed to help needy and poor people. Huh? And after some time, when he was given the title of the Prophet and in Medina, he said that even if those people who are infidels, not Muslims, call me to join the same organization or association for the help or extending help to the needy and poor, I will join, join them. So for the humanitarian work, we can work together. And there should not be any difference in it. But as far as the values of religion are concerned, the teaching of religion is concerned, we should honor it and save it and secure it. Pick. Roberto Marcia from Brazil. Uh, Assalamu alaikum, Your Holiness, uh, Sua Santidade. Uh, é, no segundo dia da Jalce Salana, o senhor mencionou a dificuldade da situação no Brasil em face dos últimos tempos. Qual, uh, qual, uh, como, qual o conselho que o senhor daria para melhorar o meu país? Uh, por conta dos problemas sociais uh, e tudo mais que acontece uh, no Brasil. Uh, I just speak uh, in English, but uh, just speak Portuguese. Okay, it's okay. Uh, my yes, brother, it's translate. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Qual o conselho que o senhor daria para o povo brasileiro nesse momento tão difícil que ele está passando? Ele está dizendo que, na segunda palavra do speech de Jalsa Salana, o senhor mencionou a difícil situação que o Brasil está passando agora. So he want to know what would be your advice for the betterment of the country and to resolve the problems that people are facing. So I did not say because if you leave a cell phone, you will be okay. <laughs> so my, um, I said, and you know, it is on the news everywhere in, uh, in the media that uh, Brazil is passing through a difficult situation. And the best thing is then <coughs> honest leadership and uh, hard work of the people of the country. Yes. If two things are there, then you will survive and you will even rule much, much better than the, uh, not only overcome this uh, situation, but you will provide help to the other neighboring countries. <coughs> Okay, ele disse que ele não só disse que largando os celulares o país vai progredir, mas além disso ele acredita que para o progresso da nação como um todo, em primeiro lugar liderança justa e honesta e depois trabalho árduo por parte do povo. Ele disse que com essas duas coisas o Brasil não só pode contornar essa situação, como tem muito espaço para progredir e fazer grandes progressos. Você fala português ou espanhol? Eu falo português Sorry, no, but you are from Brazil. Yeah. And so, in yeah. Uh, Brazilian speak French Spanish or Portuguese? Portuguese. Muito obrigado. Thanks. Spanish is also spoken there. 
Okay. Oh? Yes, a little. I, actually, Portuguese is quite similar to Spanish, okay. so. Acha, right. So, if if you correct these two uh, um, uh, uh, systems, government and the people, it will be okay. Então, se você corrigir essas duas situações, o governo e o trabalho pelo povo, então vai ficar tudo bem. Okay. Muito obrigado. Ok, right. Or, Bernard Reich, from the Netherlands. Or, Han, from Poland. I just have a question about Kurt Wilders. The Dutch counterterrorism agency gave him go ahead to hold the cartoon uh, competitions. Uh, and they said he has the freedom of speech. So do you think uh, the uh, government could have stopped him? And do you have a message to government to go? See, I always say that there should be a limit on freedom of speech. Even when I gave a, delivered a address in the Dutch parliament there, I was asked the question by a parliamentarian, then the, the, there should not be any limit. And why do you say there is a limit then? My answer was, and even rather it was a question, that why do you have the law uh, against anti-Semitism? Then if there is freedom of speech, then let the people say whatever they like to say about Jews, why they have enacted the law of anti-Semitism everywhere in the European world? Hmm? So, so, always they put some limits on these things. And if there are no limits, then the decision will spread and enmities will develop. And then the world needs peace and love and harmony today. Not conflicts and rifts. So we should behave and respect each other's values. So. Okay. Uh, only one person now time is yes, yeah, yeah, my name is Juma Abiodun. I publish What Top News in Nigeria. What? Yeah. Um, also I would like to ask about um, what's your advice to Nigeria government on Russian uh, cattle ranching, because there are killings here and there around Boko Haram are killing people all around there. Just this morning, um, five suicide bombers also detonated the uh, it's, it's, it's a pity, very much regrettable, that all these groups are doing these atroc atrocities in the name of Islam and Allah. Islam means love, peace, and harmony. And uh, I have spoken at length on these topics everywhere. Even if you read uh, my, some of my lectures, addresses, you will know that what is the true teaching of Islam, or whatever they are doing is against the teaching of Islam, and uh, it should be stopped. And who will stop? Sir? Muslim Ummah should join hands together to stop these situations. Eh? So these uh, groups are doing in the name of Islam, in the name of religion, but the, their leaders have their own vested interests, which they are trying to achieve or fulfill. So this is what, this is why this is a challenge for our community, for Amjia community, which is spreading the true message of Islam, that is peace, love, and harmony. Hmm? Okay then, I think that's all. Thank you for coming. Thank you, Assalamu alaikum.